are there wine experts? So are there people who claim to be better at, at tasting and appreciating wine than say uh, you or me? Well, there, there's certainly experts out there in, in terms of the level of training that they might have or, or being a sommelier. Uh, you know, certainly here at Brock University, we have our Cool Climate Enology and Viticulture Institute. A lot of our students who are in that program know quite a lot about wine. And when we have them come in as part of our participant pool, they, they sometimes, those students come and participate. And it's, uh, it's, it's very easy to say, oh, well, I'm an expert. So what we, in our research, what we rely on is a wine knowledge questionnaire. So we usually give this questionnaire to our participants to see uh, an objective, uh, it, well, it, it is an objective way of, of, of seeing how much knowledge somebody really has. But wine tasters, like these, these expert wine tasters who evaluate wines and give them scores out of 100 that are, are used um, uh, you know, to put the medallions on the wine and things like that, uh, are they better at identifying and uh, talking about wines uh, than I am? That's, um, that's an interesting question. Um, I, I know there are some studies that that show that experts really aren't experts, and there are some studies that show that, that they really are experts. I think um, at the end of the day, um, the, the scores that are, are given for, for consumers, again, is used as a useful piece of information for the consumers, and the, the, the judges or the, the wine raters, as you call them, they are probably more more knowledgeable than the average consumer. So I think that, that there is, because they, they, they do have training and they do have um, more expertise than the average consumer. So I would say that, that um, there is a, a, a basis for that. Um, having said that, I think that it, it might also depend on the, the definition of, of expertise. So, uh, you know, so I have two black wine glasses here, and uh, most people can't tell if there's, you know, when you, when you lose those visual cues of the actual color, if you're to sample these wines, most people can't tell if the glass contains a red or a white. Now, I haven't done an experiment like this with a, a trained sommelier, um, but I'd like to one day, uh -huh. and uh, and you know, so it's that that kind of thing where, well, you know, can 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 a sommelier tell the difference? They probably can, but somebody like you, I'm not I'm sure. Scared, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I can. So we want to get our friends to run an experiment where uh, they find out whether novices, undergraduate students can tell the difference between wines on a whole bunch of levels. Can they tell the difference between red and white? Can they tell the difference between the grapes? Can they tell an expensive bottle from an inexpensive bottle? Uh, without going into detail, can you run through some of the things that they should really consider when they're designing a, a well-controlled experiment to find uh, a reasonably good answer to some of these questions? Well, one way to, in terms of looking at price, um, having a, you know, having this wine in, you know, a brown paper bag, so we don't get any other cues of where the wine is from and and what vintage it might be and, and so on, or if there might even be a price label on it. We we want to hide all that, and we can, you know, pour from the brown paper bag into glasses so that again we're trying to if, if price is a variable you're looking at examining try to minimize any other influence that might affect the consumer's judgment uh, if you can get a hold of these black glasses again we're, we're, we're trying to take away any other visual information maybe the respondent based on their own personal experience or um, something else that they might think that if it's a darker color red, it might be more expensive, whatever. Maybe if you want to kind of eliminate any of those other cues that they might use into their judgment, try to isolate whatever variable it is to, to examine. If, if we did this, 
properly using the experimental method. We would probably take a, a sample of sommeliers, uh, a sample of maybe high knowledge consumers, mm. a sample of low knowledge consumers, and see after various trials. So we might not just do one trial. We might do several trials and with several different types of grape varietals. So not just Pinot Noir versus Gewürztraminer, but maybe also, um, you know, like you said, a, like a Malbec or a Shiraz versus oaked Chardonnay or, or something else. So that over consistently over many trials and across different grape varietals with a, a, a representative sample for each category of consumer, is there a statistically significant difference that would not be due to chance? If you guessed correctly by chance, which is what you, you said earlier, well, you know, how do we know that I didn't just guess the correct one? Then it would be 50-50 that people said this was red and this was red. It would be 50-50, yep. right? So what we're looking for, for let's say you're in the group of um, low. you would low. say low okay yep. well yep. fair enough if, we, if we're looking at the group of low knowledge consumers we might see is the rate at which they're saying red 50 50 right or is it higher than 50 50 uh, okay right so is it higher than chance and you use a statistical technique called chi-square which i won't get into to determine whether that probability or that rate of, of, of responding um, red for this one is is higher than 50 50. Now we'll do that also for the high knowledge consumers. We see is are they saying red for this one and red for this one 50 percent of the time or is it higher mm -hmm. that they're saying red for the actual red one and we'll do yeah. the same thing for the sommelier group and that would be a, a a proper test in, to answer this question. Mm -hmm.